In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how metadata can play an important role in the digital workflow. I'll use both Adobe Bridge and Portfolio 8 to read and write metadata to images. Along the way, I'll discuss how to leverage the power of metadata for efficient organization of an image library. We're looking now in Adobe Bridge at a selection of raw files. Looking in the metadata tab on the left, you'll notice that this image already contains some useful information, namely the EXIF data recorded by the camera. I've got exposure, ISO, lens, creation date, and camera values for this image, all without lifting a finger. But this is just the beginning. When entering your own metadata, it's much faster to batch apply values as opposed to adding them one image at a time. Now even though the subject and location vary among the images you see here, one thing they do have in common is that I created them. So the first bits of metadata I'm going to apply are ownership and contact information. And I'm going to use a template to apply the metadata to all of the images in a single step. First I'll select all the images. I'll open up this IPTC tab. You can see that for now it's empty. But at the top of the metadata tab, if I click on the flyout menu, go to replace metadata, I'm going to select a custom pre-built template that I've made named Copyright 2006. Selecting this tells Bridge to pull all of the values from the template and apply them to the images. And you can see that now all of these images have my contact information selected. Things like name, address, phone, website, and even a copyright notice. Some of these images even share the same location, so what I'll do is select a few. I'll take these home renovation shots. They were all shot in the same place, so there's a lot of common information that I can enter about them. I'll go to location here. These were all shot in a brownstone. City was Brooklyn. I'll put NY for New York, US for the country, and I can even go up to this description panel and type in a brief description. I'll say here, home renovation. Now I hit the enter key and Bridge has applied this metadata to the images. I should mention all of this metadata is actually embedded into the image files. Any derivative files will retain this data. So whether I create low resolution JPEGs for the web or large TIFFs for printing, the ownership, contact, and shot location data will be available to whoever receives these images. Now I'm going to import these images into a portfolio catalog. Here we've got an empty catalog. I'm going to click the Add button. I'm going to select all of these images and hit the Choose button. In the Catalog Options dialog box under Advanced Properties, you'll see that I have chosen to extract metadata from files. Using this settings button, I've already mapped the metadata values that we saw in Bridge to their corresponding custom fields in Portfolio. But wait, if this metadata was already embedded in the image, why do we need to extract it? Well, Portfolio doesn't copy the actual image file to its database. Instead, it extracts a low resolution thumbnail to create a catalog item. This item is simply a collection of information about the real image file. This use of a proxy, or alias, allows Portfolio to search, sort, and organize quickly and efficiently, even with catalogs containing thousands of items. I'll hit OK and hit OK a second time to begin the import process. We quickly see that our images are being added to the catalog, and we also see here that the same metadata we saw in Bridge is displayed. Even if you look on the second image, the information we entered about the location and city shows up here in Portfolio as well. The real power of Portfolio is that we can now search these images based on metadata values. Want to see images shot with an ISO of 100? Well, we simply bring up the Find menu. We can go up to this Film ISO field and look for all matches for 100. And you can see, I'll change the view to get smaller thumbnails, you can see that Portfolio has found just a small subset of the catalog, only those images with an ISO of 100. What if we want to see those home renovation shots? Again, we can pull up the Find window. This time we'll go to Description and we'll ask Portfolio to look for every file whose description contains the word, I'll type in Renovation. We'll hit Find and you can see now that only the home renovation shots are displayed. By adding metadata, 
we make it much easier to find exactly the images we're looking for because we're searching not by what an image is named or what folder it lives in, but by its characteristics or attributes. Let's take a look at a more complete catalog and see some of the possibilities. This is a catalog of my fine art images. Portfolio allows me to track lots of information about them. Here, you can see custom fields that I've created, not only for things like city, country, and description, but very specific items like the mat size. What size is it going to be when it's printed? How many prints do I have in the studio? What paper was the image printed on? And of course, how much is the price? I've even got a web posting custom field that tells me the date the image was uploaded to my website. I can quickly access this information for any image in the catalog without having to open that image in Photoshop or dig through paper records. This is a big, big time saver. I've also created smart galleries that automatically sort images for me. My fine artwork consists of projects or series of images, so I've made a gallery folder for each one. You can see some of them here on the left. Now how did I get images into a particular gallery? Well, I first added keywords to all of my images identifying the project or series to which they belong. Then I created a saved find to search for a particular keyword. I'll pull up the find window and here under saved finds you'll see a find called botanical series. It searches for images containing botanical as a keyword. Any keyword that matches botanical the portfolio will return that image. Now in the settings window for this particular gallery, you can see that I have chosen to attach a saved find to this gallery. Whenever this gallery is opened, it performs the botanical series find, in other words, all of the images with a keyword matching botanical. I've even chosen here to sort the gallery. I'm sorting it by title and I can apply a custom view of it if I want to see just thumbnails or if I want to see a lot of text information, I have that choice and flexibility. The key to using a smart gallery is that it searches for images that match the save find criteria every time that gallery is selected. As new images containing the matching keyword are added to the catalog, the gallery's contents will automatically update. So Portfolio allows me to easily see just the images I want without having to repeatedly perform the same search. So here I've got some other galleries. I've got a gallery called Bicoastal and simply by clicking on it Portfolio is performing a saved find looking for all of the images that have the keyword in this case of Bicoastal. So you can see some of the organizational options you have but I've barely scratched the surface of the possibilities of Portfolio for really organizing and maintaining an image library. With a little planning, you can create a fast, efficient, and highly productive method for searching through and managing a large number of images.